Demon keeps dreaming of a demon town. Motherfucker, bitch, fuck, shit went down. Fleming's got an itch, scratch it with a bitch. Demon keeps dreaming of a demon town. Ooh, Johnson, that's my name. Hello there, Sarah from 17 once again, introducing you to my Shadows of the Damned Satanic Hell difficulty video walkthrough. This is the level 5-3 and it is entitled The Castle of Hassel. And I don't know about your guys, but the entire last part of this game completely smacks of a game that ran over its budget and had to make a hell of a lot of filler to get it finished and to give it any kind of length. Because the, the flying levels that we've just done three or four of, which are absolutely abysmal, turned up for no real reason other than to pad out the game. And then these last few levels just kind of transcend into moving through areas that have been, you know, unnecessarily elongated, and then taking on some bosses. But it doesn't really diminish too much from the game, it just really makes you notice that the studio probably overshot a little bit, and that's why the first half of the game is a lot more impressive than the last half. But let's talk some strategy, because this is a pretty close-quartered fight, and uh, if done correctly, you'll probably have some issue. So you're going to get attacked by some standard dudes covered in shadow. You want to get rid of that with your light shot. Then these two dudes show up. The the bouncers that I like to call them turn into turn in a performance. And they're just going to be putting pressure on you to, to try and keep your distance and pick them off. But if you've been fighting them like I've been fighting them, it generally involves one shot to knock their helmet off, the other shot to take their face off. So as you can see, the room itself is not that challenging. But it's one of those things where... This game can go to hell in a handbasket pretty fast. I'm not talking like sudden death or anything, but you can get sloppily hit and then one hit can turn into two or three hits and you can put yourself in a bad spot. Luckily enough, I'll hopefully be able to show you the, the better strategies to get through them without that happening. But another darkness moment, another opportunity to do some crazy rolls and knock some dudes as we get one part closer to Fleming. And uh, you'll notice there's a lot of silly puzzles on this section of the game. Some of them are funny, some of them are less funny, and uh, all of them are just time sinks, so just get on with it, keep pushing forward, and you will eventually get to the end of this game, because this is the final level of the game, minus the boss fights. So, if you've not been enjoying the, the glory that is Shadows of the Damned, you don't have too much more of it. If you are enjoying it, this is the final leg, so, you know, get your fill, because you'll probably be playing it another four times to, to get your achievements because they don't stack, which is insane in 2011, but, you know, Suda51 are renowned for being kind of fucking funky. So I've been getting a lot of requests for guides off of random people, and I am grateful for those requests, guys. It's just a case of, at this moment in time, I'm a little bit busy. I've got a lot of other things that are distracting me from my YouTube stuff. Which is not necessarily a bad thing, it just may means that I can't go balls to the wall on everything. Um, I mean, like, if a new game came out and it was important, I would definitely, you know, record it, commentate it, and edit it and everything and have it rendered and uploaded within about three to four days, as quick as my internet would allow. I'd do it in one if I could, but I, my internet doesn't allow me to do that. The other projects, like this one, don't have to be as swift, because this is not a new, a new game. This is off the back burner of 2011, but it's a game that I wanted to do and that I've enjoyed. And because there isn't that many projects at the moment, it's enabled me to put it up and to keep, you know, keep a steady feed on my channel. But some of the requests are good, some of the requests are not so good. And uh, there's a couple of things you've got to bear in mind when it comes to, to, to these games that people are asking for. There are already a lot of guides on YouTube. There are a hell of a lot of Let's Plays that people say are walkthroughs. There aren't really walkthroughs because they aren't a fucking clue what they're doing. But they do somehow manage to stumble through the game. And then you have the, the more professional ones which are the guides. And there's a lot of them. There's a lot of them with commentary. There's a lot of them with some really, really good gamers doing them. And uh, just because I don't have my version of their guide does not mean that their guides are bad people there's there's some good guides out there that don't have my name on them oh by the way right then uh, you'll notice I was getting injured when I went into that world if you follow where Fleming is you, you move into that light you will be teleported into this room I completely forgot and uh, I backed away and ended up taking a little bit of damage but it teleports you there anyway so don't worry about dying it will always put you into this place that was just a little mistake by me uh, 10 to 1, when you get there, you'll not even notice, and uh, you'll not make the same mistake I did. I just have that really bad habit of overthinking things when when I'm, you know, recording my games. Because you'll just get to that place, and you'll be like, oh god, 
I've played this five times and I suddenly can't remember where to go. What the fuck is going on? And uh, similar shit to that. But uh, another electric guy. Once again, you can use the explosive hot bonus shots on the roof to take him out. It does work wonders. And uh, you've seen me fight these dudes quite a while, quite a bit, so I'm not going to talk too much about them. But yeah, there's a lot of guides for a lot of these games. And um, if I can get down to doing the projects when I get a little bit more time, I'm more than up for, for doing more, more walkthroughs to older games, because I don't really mind. For instance, I'm probably going to be doing a... A beginner's guide to, to Ninja Guide, and even though it's a pretty old game, and that's purely because I'm going to be playing the game on its hardest difficulty, and that in itself is an achievement, so I would like to record it. And although it's not going to be, you know, like some godly walkthrough on how to do it with no damage and no nimpo and looking like an absolute god, it's still going to be something fun and something interesting. But things like, like Kane and Lynch 2 is the most recent request I've got. A game that I absolutely love. It's, it's one of my pet pleasures. It's just one of the guilty sins of mine, should I say, guilty pleasures kind of combined guilty pleasure and pet peeve together into pet pleasure which is definitely not gonna get you know patented and used very often but I, I love the game I really do and I do acknowledge that it has problems it has a plethora of problems and if I was on the dev team I could have made a significantly better game and that's not ego that's just fucking fact but like the game on X on extreme there is one challenging bit and that is the glazer mission when you're on the street because that car dies so quickly and you die really quickly as well everything else is, is pretty damn easy the, the only thing you've got to bear in mind is, is keep your distance and make sure you never ever get stuck with an SMG because those SMGs do not hit a thing you will be in some serious fucking trouble shotgun's the most powerful gun on the game and it has ridiculous range and ridiculous accuracy and uh, the last time I played the game it had that crashing bug where every time he shot somebody and got a headshot, it kept freezing, so I don't even know if they got rid of that. But, if I can get more content from Fragile Alliance, I probably will, because I do enjoy to play it. I just wish you could get people into a custom game like you could on the first, uh, Kane and Lynch, because I would literally stack parties and play that game all day, because I love it. I really do. I just don't like the fact that when you play online, everybody betrays, everybody turns into a fucking asshole. I like going, doing the heist and getting as many, as much money as we can as a team. I like being a team. I'm not the, the guy that, that waits till everybody gets in the escape car and then rolls a grenade under it. That's fun to do and it's fun to watch, but it's not fun when you want to go in there like heat and do a proper mission. Right, on this one, I, I don't get through this level as quick as I could have done. <clears throat> because when you get into this meat area that I'm in right now, there is a doorway that will lead you to where the key is. And uh, I completely fucked this up. So... Watch what I do and do the opposite. I'm going to tell you where you're supposed to go. So do I go straight forward or right? I go right. If you go straight forward, you will go through into the room where the key is and you will not get teleported back here. Instead, you're going to see me run around in this area. You do get experience if you need experience. You do get to kill some stuff. You do get to find some stuff if that's what you're wanting. But if you just want to get through the game really quickly, go right, go straight forward. You'll get your key. It'll open the gate and it will end this level instead of the next three minutes of me running around, looking in all the different areas, trying to remember what I'd completely forgot. So I do apologize for that, guys. But like I say, you can most easily get through this without the knowledge of me. The knowledge of this game is, I mean... On Legion Hunter, this game is not that difficult. The bosses are a bitches at times. Everything else is pretty much gravy. It is not a challenging game. It has to be said. I can't say anything else. Oh, and if anybody's wondering about the Saints Row live playthrough that I'm doing, I've got the first 11 parts recorded. I, I came up with a, a little bit of difficulty because I accidentally saved over the damn file, so I had to play all that start bit once again to the same spec of what I did on the playthrough so that I can continue recording those but I'm gonna do some after I finish this guide so I'm hoping to do another 10 missions or something along those lines just to keep pushing it forward so I'm having a lot of fun and it seems to be going down pretty well <clears throat> but I watched a film the other day because I'm gonna talk about some other stuff because this is like I say you don't even have to do what I'm doing now this is just a bit of exposition and the film's called A Lonely Place to Die and I thought that this was going to be like Buried, it was going to be like Frozen, it was going to be like, you know, 127 hours. I thought it was going to be of that air, of that kind of ilk. And it's not. It really isn't. But it starts off <clears throat> something along those lines. And it's it's following a group of climbers, a, a family bunch of hikers that climb this mountain to get to this, this cabin to the friends in the highlands of Scotland. And 
they decide to well they they, go, they must go on this journey quite a lot because they they're all like mountaineering dudes and climbers and, and fucking psychopath you know adventurers which I don't understand because it's it's like everything always goes wrong and I know in real life it probably doesn't but when you watch these films it just makes you wonder why would anybody want to climb a fucking mountain without any rope it's like come on people you're just gonna fall it doesn't make any sense but these people are, are walking through these woods anyhow trying to to tra traverse this path to get to where they're going and uh, one of the group hears this noise and it's a pipe in the ground and it's a they can hear a voice and when they start digging they, they open this this compartment it's like a wooden box and there is a little Eastern European girl in it she's a schoolgirl she's about six and uh, it's just kinda like what the fuck is she doing all the way out here what is kinda going on and they decide that the girl should stay with two of the members and they should follow the stream and these other two who are the more experienced climbers should climb over the ridiculously hard to climb mountain to get help so you're thinking already they've split up it's the murder you know syndrome number one everything's gonna go bad from here on out and they start climbing up this sheer face they don't have too much rope the guy is the most experienced climber so he goes first and then the girl sees him fly past her shoulder with no rope falling like 200 feet to the rocks below splat dead and you're just like oh my fucking god that is not good then a bunch of rocks start rolling from the top of the the, <clears throat> the cliff that she's on she does not have a rope now because he was her safety line and she's trying to dodge them she's holding on for dear life she's slipping a little bit and then one of them hits her and she goes spiraling but luckily enough she hits a few branches and she lands you know as comfortably as you probably can and manages to survive when she's on the ground she goes over to a, a friend who's now dead in shock she grabs the rope and it turns out the rope has been cut so it immediately goes from being this survival horror thing you know trapped on a mountain to oh my god what the fuck is going on we've got kidnapped eastern european girls in holes and We've got cut ropes, so shit is kicking off. But thanks for watching, guys. I'll continue this topic in the next video, so you take care now.